I figured I would end this year with a video that kind of recaps the year and what I've learned and just kind of tie a nice little bow at the end of this year. To start this off, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my art journey. I did not go to art school. I don't really have any classical training. I do have a famous grand father and great-grandfather who were both sculptors and I don't know if they've influenced me or if it's just a trait that runs in our family. My great-grandfather Alexander from Mr. Proctor, he was a famous western sculptor and I just think that's super cool. He was super cowboy. Also traveled all through Europe and same with my grandfather who lived in Italy, he got, it wasn't the Prix de Rome, but it was the American version of it because he went to the American Academy. He was one of the fellows there. And it's kind of interesting, I've touched on this before, but I remember when I was young, I started with sketching. Graphite sketches, charcoal sketches were my absolute favorite. I loved it, I did it any chance I got on my homework for fun. And I have a very visceral memory of being told that sketches won't sell, that you'll never make it as an artist because people don't buy black and white sketches. Like you have to learn to paint in order to make money. And I was like, okay, well, I have no reason to doubt you. So when I was 11, I taught myself to paint, <laughs> albeit it was, you know, really rustic and rough because I'm still learning, but that's when I started painting. And a similar thing with horses. I remember I drew a lot of horses, painted a lot of horses, and people are like, you'll never make money if you draw horses. People don't want to buy paintings of horses. And I was like, okay, I have no reason to doubt you. So I like changed again. It's been really interesting to reflect on the things that I used to love to do and then have been told that I couldn't, which is kind of sad, but also maybe it's an important part of my own journey just because it allowed me to kind of then come full circle. Through college, I would do paintings on the side and sell them for extra money. I got into a few galleries in college, but ultimately I went to school for a degree in pre-veterinary medicine and Spanish. Instead of going to vet school, I became a professional show jumper which I guess backstory on that is that I've ridden hunter jumper my whole life. So I decided to become an assistant trainer. I kind of stopped doing artwork altogether just because horses will take up all of your time. But I loved it. I loved every second of it. Long story short, I came around to art again and that was in kind of 2019. I wasn't very good when I came back, which was really frustrating. But the good thing about coming back to it and not feeling like I was very good is that it made me dive really deep into the education aspects. So color theory, how to mix your colors, where to put colors. I like analyze my favorite artists and study kind of like how they put paint down. And I have been working so hard to study not only how to paint better, but also how to market yourself better, how to be on social media. And so that's where this brings me to now and what I've learned specifically this year. This is the end of my second full year of being a full-time artist. And I started this year being a psychoanalyst on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, I would like go through all the numbers. I learned how to read all the numbers, what they meant, studying the algorithm and how to make it happy. And however, during this time, I also really struggled to get into the art studio where I didn't really want to show up and work. I wasn't connecting to the paintings that I was doing because I was so focused on numbers and money and what I thought I should be doing. The middle of this year, I switched and started working on my mind and to some degree kind of said screw it to the algorithm. And that's when everything changed. I'm not saying all of a sudden I grew 60,000 followers. That didn't happen. But what did happen is that I felt freer, I felt happier. It was so easy for me to start showing up to the studio and creating paintings. So what changed? I really challenged myself to kind of give up the analytics 
because the algorithm's always gonna change. So you're just chasing this like, this relatively evasive thing that you may never actually really catch. And it was creating a workflow that wasn't sustainable. I kind of challenged myself to stop looking at anal analytics and just create and do what felt natural. I just stopped following trends for the sake of following trends. If I liked how someone presented something, I would try to make it my own still, and it still might be considered trendy, but I didn't do it just for the sake of being trendy. I did it because it felt authentic to me. And same with YouTube videos. I just started to create videos that when I looked at the video footage, felt right. Are there ones that I would go back and kind of change and alter a little bit? Yeah, but that's fine because ultimately my main goal is to create paintings and do the best YouTube video that I can, but I'm not a cinematographer. So it's not fair to put that pressure on me. Yes, I want them to be the best that they can be, but at some point I would rather put more of my creative energy into creating better paintings. So that had to kind of give and take, but in making those decisions, like I said, it just freed me up and it made me happy. And I am like so inspired right now. What am I focusing on this next year? In 2024, I really wanna maximize my paintings that I'm working on. Making each as close to a masterpiece as possible, <laughs> which is a lot of pressure. And I don't want it to be a pressure thing. It's just challenging me to take the time on each one that it needs to be the best that I can make it. I want to work on more small studies. I always tend to want to spend more time on the big paintings, but I really, really want to challenge myself to get some smaller studies done. But overall, I just want to take the time to create highly curated art that I'm very proud of. And I kind of want to drop this idea of needing to rush and create this many paintings in a year because it's just gonna take the time that it's gonna take. And I want to create statement pieces and that takes a while and I have to be okay with that. I want to work into getting into more art competitions or art galleries now that I'm creating more of my own artwork and less commissions. If there's anything that I can leave you with, it's that of authenticity. I think no matter what you do, doing it in a way that speaks to you, that feels right to you, will always put you ahead of the game. It will always bring the right people into your path. And I think you're gonna feel way more fulfilled through the whole process. Putting that energy out in the world is only gonna make everything around you that much better. So I challenge everyone to be their most authentic self. To not be a slave to the algorithm and to just have fun, do the best you can. You can still learn about all of those things, tips and tricks to like maximize your efforts. But so here's to the last video of this year. And I hope it leaves you feeling inspired. I'm definitely just gonna keep working through this holiday season. Like I said, I'm so happy and I'm so inspired that I just wanna keep learning and doing and yeah but this is the last video so the next time i see you it'll be 2024 which is insane i hope you all have a fantastic holiday season stay safe say i love you to anyone and everyone that matters and i will see you in the new year bye everyone